This cargo ship is loaded with ammunition, 8,000 tons of it, worth $10 million. There are 30,000 tons in this depot, about $30 million worth. Ammunition runs into big money. When ammunition is needed, it is usually needed badly. Ammunition must therefore be kept in a serviceable condition. Sometimes ammunition is damaged and has to be renovated. Rough handling and faulty storage accounts for about 80% of all damage and resultant need for renovation, destruction, or other disposition. The other 20% of damage, which can be corrected by renovation, is caused by normal deterioration and is discovered by periodical inspections. Vast sums of money can be saved by renovation. For example, this 90 millimeter projectile costs approximately $30. The cost of completely renovating it is approximately $10. That's a saving of 66% for each projectile made as good as new. By renovating ammunition in the field, instead of shipping it to the zone of interior, further savings are effective. Renovation of ammunition in the field is done by ordnance renovation units attached to ammunition depots. These units are small and mobile. On his way to the renovation area, the sergeant in charge looks over his orders that define what has to be done and how and where. The who of the job is his renovation crew of 12. A job description is prepared in detail for each operation and supplements the process flow chart. The process flow chart listing each operation has been worked out in detail before starting out on the job. This chart consists of a description of the job, the personnel required, the necessary tools and equipment, and the time needed to complete each item of renovation. The general area has been selected by prior reconnaissance. Now the actual site of the renovation line has to be laid out according to the terrain. After the site has been decided upon, the equipment for the renovation line is unloaded. Depending upon the terrain and existing roads, renovation equipment may be set up either in a straight line between two roads or in a U-shape. The U-line is ordinarily employed when only one road is available. The ammunition is unpacked at one end of the U, renovated and repacked at the other end of the line. When two roads are available, the renovation line is usually set up between them. Unserviceable ammunition enters at one end and the renovated and repacked ammunition is removed at the other. The ammunition moves down the primary line, the packing materials on the secondary. Boxes of ammunition sorted by lot numbers are awaiting unpacking at the beginning of the lines. In the case of fixed or semi-fixed rounds, after unpacking, the complete round moves along the line to stations where the various operations are performed. All equipment is grounded and hazardous operations are separated by operational shields. Personnel and explosive limits are posted. As the ammunition begins the move down the primary renovation line, it is first uncrated, inspected and disassembled. At the defusing and refusing station, defective fuses are removed and replaced. If necessary, the round is cleaned, repainted, and re-stenciled. The propellant in the cartridge case to be renovated is transferred into suitable grounded containers at this station. If necessary to the repair, the primer is first fired at the primer firing stand. The cartridge case is next cleaned.
and if necessary, repaired at this station, followed by resizing here. A new primer is inserted at this point. The propellant is now weighed and check weighed and poured back into the cartridge here. The loaded cartridge and renovated projectile are reassembled and chamber gauged at this station. The reconditioned round is repacked and the container taped and stenciled. After unpacking, the packing materials will proceed down the secondary line for reconditioning if necessary. The packing boxes are repaired at this station. They are repainted and re-stenciled here. Fiber containers are obliterated and repainted at this station. And the fiber containers re-stenciled. After the packing materials are reconditioned, the renovated ammunition is repacked. The repacked ammunition can now be returned to stock. This lot, ready to go through this straight renovation line, is semi-fixed 105 millimeter howitzer ammunition. At the first station, the complete rounds are carefully removed from boxes and fiber containers. Both packing and complete rounds are inspected. When a cartridge case is so deeply corroded that it would be unsafe if cleaned, the unsafe case is marked and put aside for destruction. This cartridge case, which has been dented by rough handling, can be renovated. However, before it can be renovated, the propellant is removed from the cartridge case. The propellant is put into a suitable container. If a metal box is being used for this, the box is grounded. By fitting the dented case over a mandrel and using a non-sparking hammer, the cartridge case can be de-dented and made serviceable. The propellant is removed from its temporary storage container and put back in the renovated cartridge case. Fuses must often be replaced due to damage or obsolescence. Ordinarily, the fuse can be removed by hand on the renovation line. A new fuse with booster attached replaces it. The old fuse and booster are placed in the container which is marked with an X. This serves as a warning not to use these defective parts again. Using a fuse wrench, the fuse is tightened. It is then restaked. If a fuse is stuck for safety's sake, it must be removed remotely by mechanical means from behind an operational shield made of concrete, sand-filled boxes or bags, or a mound of earth. The projectile is clamped firmly into a vise. A shaft projects from the vise through the side of the operational shield. With the operator on the safe side and watching the operation in a mirror, the fuse is loosened in complete safety.
The projectile is then removed from the vise and the fuse can now be replaced by hand in the ordinary manner. If the projectile is rusty, it is cleaned using a brush. A non-sparking brush is desirable, but not mandatory, where there are no exposed explosives. With the rust removed and the projectile in good condition, the rotating band is masked with tape in preparation for painting. The projectile is painted its appropriate color with proper type paint. After the paint has dried, the projectile is re-stenciled. It is then inspected and ring gauge. The cartridge case is chamber gauge to ensure that the complete round is serviceable. Meanwhile, the packing materials that go down the secondary line are inspected carefully and where necessary are marked for reconditioning. Rust is removed from the metal ends of the fiber containers. The metal is painted. The rest of the container is also spot painted to restore its protective efficiency. Damaged packing boxes are repaired or rebuilt and passed along the conveyor belt to be stenciled. The reconditioned packing box is stenciled with the rounds nomenclature, lot number, suffix for reworking, number of the renovation unit, date of renovation, and federal stock number. The inspected and renovated round is now ready to be placed in the fiber container and sealed with tape. First, the fiber container is re-stenciled with proper markings. Then the complete round is packed into the properly marked fiber container. Both ends of the container are closed. And sealed with tape. The round is now serviceable ammunition, ready to be packed in wooden boxes and hauled away to the storage area. The defective fuses and boosters are destroyed by demolition in the presence of a certifying officer. To renovate fixed ammunition, the projectile must be removed from the cartridge case using a disassembly machine. This combination assembly and disassembly machine when fitted with various spare parts and selective jaws, can handle any fixed ammunition from 37 millimeter through 105 millimeter. The fixed ammunition, in this case 90 millimeter rounds, is unpacked and inspected for damage and deterioration. Rounds requiring renovation are sorted by lot numbers and put on the roller conveyor to be disassembled. To disassemble a fixed round of ammunition, the projectile is gripped in the vise. The choice of selective jaws is what makes this machine so versatile.
The shaft of the machine extends through the wall of the operational shield, and by turning the wheel, the complete round is disassembled by remote control from outside the barricade. After disassembly, the projectile and cartridge case are removed, being careful not to strike the primer, dent the case, or spill the propellant. By using a fuse wrench, the fuse is removed from the projectile for inspection. If it is found to be serviceable, the fuse is reused. Using the cover of a fiber container to protect the primer, the propellant is poured carefully into the empty fiber container by means of a grounded funnel. If a metal box is used instead of the fiber container, that too must be grounded. Old defective primers are removed and replaced with new ones. In order to remove the primer, it must first be fired. If the cartridge is to be salvaged, the primer is removed after firing by driving it out with a depriming tool. If the cartridge case is to be renovated, the fired primer is driven out with a hammer and rod. A new primer is inserted into the base on this press. It is gauged for height. Dents in a cartridge case can be removed by placing the cartridge case on a mandrel and using a wooden hammer covered with rawhide. The cartridge case is then re-necked and chamber gauged. The repaired cartridge case is now ready to be refilled with a propellant. The propellant is first weighed. Next, it is check weighed to assure that the correct amount is poured back into the cartridge case. The metal funnel is grounded. Meanwhile, the projectile is cleaned. It's painted and re-stenciled. The projectiles and cartridge cases, new or renovated, are now assembled. In a crimping machine, cartridge cases and projectiles are crimped together. After being assembled and crimped, all fixed ammunition must be chamber gauged. If a chamber gauge is not available, it can be fitted into the chamber of a gun of the proper caliber. The complete renovated round is placed in its fiber container and the container tape. The container is re-stenciled with proper markings and boxed in the same manner as 105. Separate loading projectiles, such as 155 millimeters, are issued unfused. 
renovation procedures for this item differ somewhat from those shown previously. In place of the fuse, the 155 millimeter projectiles are fitted with an eye bolt lifting plug in the nose. This lifting plug is unscrewed and the supplementary charge lifted out and inspected. The threads of the lifting plug and fuse cavities are cleaned and possible exudation removed. The fuse well is gauged for correct depth and alignment. The supplementary charge is put back. Finally, the screw threads are lubricated and the eye bolt lifting plug put back in place. On projectiles both with and without supplementary charges, the fuse well cup is removed only if it is cracked or otherwise damaged. To remove a damaged fuse well cup, a special tool with an expansion head must be used. Cracked, broken, or bulged fuse well cups are removed and destroyed. 155 millimeter projectiles have another vulnerable spot the steel base plate which may become damaged or cut. Projectiles with damaged base plates are set aside for repair. Other defects to watch for are frozen nose plugs. Projectiles with damaged rotating bands are also set aside for possible repair. The reconditioning of bazooka rockets takes about the same setup as for fixed ammunition, except that rockets have electrical connections that must be checked. Rockets are ignited electrically. The lead wires and contact points must therefore be checked for corrosion and short circuits to make sure that there is no break in the circuit. The electrical circuit is checked out on a circuit continuity tester. Minor corrosion is removed from the rocket body with a non-sparking brush. Rounds not worth repairing are marked for destruction. Rocket fins get bent in careless handling. Such fins should be replaced. Whenever mortar ammunition is to be renovated, the increments should always be removed first for safety's sake. The increments are placed in a grounded container. The primer is unscrewed and the ignition cartridge taken out. Then the fins come off. The increment holders which are attached to the fins come off with them. If the fuse of a mortar round must be replaced and cannot be removed by hand, it is loosened by remote control in a vise within an operational shield. After renovation and replacements have been accomplished, the mortar round is stenciled and the increments put back in place. 
After reassembly, all parts will be checked and the round repacked. Small arms ammunition, 30 and 50 caliber, has such fast turnover in open storage and is so relatively inexpensive that if badly damaged, it is destroyed. Small arms ammunition with excess verdigris is in this category. Small arms ammunition with cracks that reduce the wall thickness of the cases should always be rejected. A declipping machine frees the ammunition from the clip or belt so that cartridge case, primer head and bullet can be inspected. This lot of small arms ammunition has not been excessively corroded or cracked and can be cleaned and reused. In the renovation of hand grenades, safety must always be considered. The grenade is inspected with extreme care and in case of accidental or premature ignition, the grenade must be dropped instantly into a baffle tank or barricade pit to contain fragmentation from the explosion. When defusing a hand grenade, an operational shield is used. Great care is taken not to ignite the firing medium. The hand grenade is then refused. After the grenades are refused and placed in fiber containers, the containers are re-stenciled and packed into boxes. Many types of mines also undergo inspection and renovation, either in whole or in part. The fuses belonging to the mines in this lot, for instance, have been declared obsolete. Because of the hazard involved in removing this particular fuse, the operator is protected. The cans containing these obsolete fuses are removed from the crates and set aside for disposal. A new fuse will be placed in the crate later on. In this case, in order to make the new fuse fit the mine, the mine must be modified. First, the arming plug is removed and the depth of the cavity gauged. A booster and booster retaining ring are inserted on this press. The retainer ring is pressed into place. It is then re-gauged for accuracy. And the arming plug is screwed back in again. The mine is now ready for the usual cleaning, painting, marking of lot number and other data and repacking. A can containing a new fuse is fitted into the corner of the metal crate. At another station, the mine is returned to the crate and the crate sealed. Pyrotechnics are inspected to see that their shipping containers are in good condition. If not, the pyrotechnics are repacked. Pyrotechnics are never renovated. You have watched the renovation of some types of ammunition in the field. Before starting any renovation operation, the job is planned beforehand using the renovation request. the job description sheet and the process flow chart. The renovation line can be U-shaped or in a straight line between rows. You have seen how a fixed round is disassembled. The cartridge case deprimed and repaired. How the projectile is cleaned and painted. How the round is assembled again. Marked, packed, 
and sealed. This extensive renovation work results in increased combat readiness. When ammunition is needed, it must be immediately available and in serviceable condition. The men who are renovating ammunition may never fire it in the field, but their work is an essential part of the Army's combat effectiveness. Thank you.